In this tutorial for Photoshop, we're going to be focusing in on making a traditional additive and subtractive color wheel for the upcoming assignment. So I'm going to switch to a template that I have where the traditional additive and subtractive color wheels are all laid out in a row. And um, let me give you a little bit of background. Traditional color system is the oldest one in use for mixing paint and other kinds of pigments. Uh, the additive color wheel is formulated for light emitting devices and the medium is actually light. You know, screens, uh, computer monitors, television screens, and even stage lighting. And the subtractive color wheel is formulated for printing processes. So anything that is printed uses uh, the subtractive color wheel. And each one of these three systems has a unique set of primary colors. I'm going to start with the additive color wheel because the uh, we're working on a computer and notice here I've got my color HSB sliders and my swatches uh, separated out here so we can just focus on those and notice if I hover over it it'll say that's the RGB colors. Below are the CMYK colors and these colors are formulated for the subtractive color system. So let's start with the primary colors of the additive color wheel which are red, green, and blue and I'm going to fill uh, the first a section with red. Green is the next color for um, this color system. And uh, RGB, there's the blue. Okay, so now I have my, my primary colors for that system set. Now halfway between red and uh, green, if you mix those two colors on the, you know, using light, we have the color yellow. So I'm going to fill that color here. And for the um, uh, color halfway between blue and uh, green is cyan. So let's fill that one. And halfway between blue and red is magenta. Okay, so we've got the, the primary and now the secondary colors. Uh, the intermediate colors, I like to use a ma kind of math for it because it gives us the perfect intermediate use. So halfway between, now notice on the HSB sliders here, that's at 60% for yellow. If this is at zero, halfway between zero and 60 is color 30. So I'm just type in col uh, col number 30 there and notice it gives me a perfect orange. So I'm going to fill this color in as orange. This one, halfway between uh, yellow, which is at 60, and green, which is at 120, is color number 90, right? So, that, I mean, that just halfway between is 90, and notice it gives us the perfect yellow-green. Halfway between 120 and this color, which is registers at 180, is color number 150. So, halfway between 20 and 180 is 150. Perfect. And for um, the next color, cyan blue, half of between cyan at 180 and blue at 240 is color number 210. There it is, the perfect cyan blue. Halfway between blue and magenta is violet. So this is at 240 and this is at 300. So we're going to go for color number 270. And that's the perfect violet. Halfway between um, magenta, which is at 330, and red at 360 is color number 330 and works like a charm. There it is, perfect. Okay, so those are the additive color, that's the additive color wheel. For the, um, let's do the subtractive color wheel next just because of the fact that we've got our color swatches formulated. Now the subtractive color wheel primary colors are kind of the opposite of the, the additive color wheel. The secondary colors in the additive color wheel happen to be the, the um, primary colors of the subtractive color wheel. So I'm going to fill, it's going to be a cyan, magenta, and uh, red. I'm sorry, cyan, magenta, and yellow. There's my magenta, but it's a different kind of a magenta. So the cyan actually, hmm, the cyan is a very different kind of a blue. It's formulated very differently, and that's the thing that get, can get us. I mean, if you, you want to make sure that the colors are formulated using the color swatches because they are actually um, really uh, modified so that when we print the colors they come out richer. So cyan, there's my magenta. I'm going to fill that. And then um, the, the third color is yellow. And notice it's very different from the other ones. It's just a few degrees off. So let's fill that. Okay. Uh, the secondary colors halfway between magenta and us. Uh, cyan are blue and notice that that's a much darker shade of blue and for uh, the red let's check the red the red is actually a tone uh, 
a tint, of, yeah, it's a tone of the color. So this one, the pure color, the pure RGB color is at 100% saturation bright, and brightness. The magenta, I'm sorry, the, um, the CMYK red is actually a tone of red. So now we've got to do um, the, oops, I put it in the wrong place. There we go. All right, and green is another same thing. It's a bit darker, so there we go. So now I have the secondary colors filled in. And halfway between, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, halfway between uh, these two colors, you know, they, they really do jump quite a bit. So I'm going to go halfway between 196 and 238. Here's where it gets tricky. Now notice the uh, color uh, uh, magenta, or I'm sorry, cyan for the um, the subtractive color wheel and blue halfway between the two the numbers are like 196 to 238 so you kind of split the difference the difference is 42 uh, degrees so halfway half of 42 is 21 so you know you take two you know 196 you subtract 21 from it and that gives us color 217 now if I plug in color 217 over here that's my that's my cyan blue color that's going to be halfway between the two and we're going to kind of, you know, formulate it somewhere with a little bit of tone in it because a little, you know, tone meaning a bit of shade, a bit of tint, right, a bit of uh, white, a bit of black. So that will give us a, a nice halfway color. And you can, you know, modify that a little bit as you go. Now for uh, halfway between blue and magenta, you know, we want to take the gauge of the colors. So blue is at of course 238 here that's the swatch color um, the magenta swatch color is at 235 so you know you split the difference halfway between the two uh, is about 282 because you know the difference is 87 divide that by two we get 43 and a half you can add that to magenta or subtract that from this color or I'm sorry add it to this color or subtract it from that color and what you end up with is color number 282 so I'm going to you know, if I, I'm going to start with that color and so that my saturation and brightness are registered and I'm just going to change the number here to the, you know, the math number that I got was 282 by subtracting the difference and I'm going to lighten that up just a little bit because the magenta is a little bit brighter. So I want more saturation, maybe a little bit less black in the mix and I'm going to fill that color. That looks pretty good. Um, maybe if I want it a wee bit darker so it looks a wee bit more like the, um, a wee bit more like the uh, the darker value blue. Yeah, I think that's going to work for me. Okay, and then halfway between magenta and red uh, is orange because it's basically 358 and 57 for yellow. Uh, you know, it's like 0 and 60, so halfway between is color number 30. Now, actually, before I do that, what I want to make sure I do is check the yellow is pretty pure, and this has, you know, this is a got some black in the mix. That's in my CMY color. CMYK color swatch. So when I plug in my number, my halfway color number 30, I want it to be a little bit lighter, right? Because that's kind of dark. So I'm going to kick that up a little bit. So it, it doesn't have nearly as much black in the mix because the yellow is much lighter. So, you know, you mix those two colors. To, oops, what am I doing? There we go. Okay, missed that one. This this one, uh, these colors need to be formulated halfway between magenta and red. Uh, we would get color number 341. So again, I'm going to, you know, I'm splitting the difference. I do the math. 358 uh, for red, 325 for magenta. So divide, you know, that's 33. The difference is 33 divided by 2. You get 16 or 17. You can subtract that from one or add it to the other color number. And we get color number 341. Okay. And... I'm going to fill that color. All right, let's get my paint bucket number going. There we go. That color looks about right. If I feel like there's, it's too dark or too light, you know, I can hit uh, Command Z and lighten it up. If I want to make it a little bit lighter so that it looks more like the, a blend, I can always go back, check the color. This one's pure. This one's pretty pure, but it's got a little bit of value in it. So yeah, that, that one looks about right, okay, because it's kind of halfway between the two in terms of uh, the saturation and brightness. Okay, color yellow is 30, color green, uh, the same green, or the green here is uh, 149, halfway between, say, 60 and 150 is 75, right? So I'm just going to plug in 75, and that's going to give me a nice yellow-green. That's a little bit dark, 
a little bit olive looking. When you kind of tone down yellows and greens with too much black, they tend to take a yellow, uh, olive tone. I think that looks a little bit better, but if I wanted to make it a wee bit darker, I can certainly you know, adjust that until it looks about halfway between the two. Now, uh, color number 159 here, and back to the cyan at color number 196. It's basically 150 to 200. Plug in the difference there, and that gives me color 175. So I'm just going to hit 175 there, and I'm going to add, yeah, I think that looks, that looks about right. So now I'm set for my subtractive color wheel. Okay, the traditional color wheel needs um, red, and again, the colors are formulated pretty similar to the primary colors of paint, so uh, my RGB colors, but red, yellow, and blue are my primary colors for uh, the traditional color wheel. Some people use a, a color that's a little bit lighter, maybe a color 230 or a color 220. You know, that's up to you. I tend to prefer, um, you know, my my deeper blue because I've mixed a lot of paint before, and I think this this color tends to look more like the blue out of the tube. Although, you know, the, the primary blue colors. So I'm going to compromise and go to color 230. So halfway between um, red at zero and this color, we're going to get pretty close to color 270 or 275. I'm going to plug in 275. That's that's a nice bright violet. Halfway between those two colors, uh, we're going to get towards a magenta or a magenta red. But because the color there's no magenta in the traditional color wheel, when we mix those two red and blue together to get a, a kind of a, a violet but more red in the mix, the color's not going to be quite as vivid as a magenta. So we're going to add some black to make it look like a paint mix. Same thing, mixing um, halfway between. Um, blue and oh, I forgot to do. Let me actually let me do the uh, primary colors first. Halfway between, or the secondary colors first. Halfway between red and yellow are orange, and that color we know is color number thirty, right? Because that's the halfway mark, and we want the color to be maximum saturation and brightness is good, because uh, that really does look the way the colors uh, mix. Halfway between blue and yellow, we're going to get to color about 120, maybe 125. I'm going to just go for 120 here. And because a blue paint and yellow paint mix a little bit darker than that really limey green color that we get, I like to add a little bit of black to the mix, just to kind of saturate, tone it down a little bit and make it look a little bit more like a paint mix. So those are my secondary colors. And now let me go back to, uh, let me start let me start with red. Halfway between red and, and orange is color number 15. This is where the math really kicks in, and that's um, a nice red-orange. Halfway between orange and yellow, orange is 30, yellow is um, color number 60, so that's going to give us 45, the perfect yellow-orange. And again, halfway between yellow at, at 60 and green at 120 is color number 90. And again, the green has a little bit of black in it, so let's kick that down, make that look like it's got a little bit of um, black in the mix, which is really um, a darker kind of shade that occurs when mixing uh, blue, a little bit of blue into yellow. Okay, so the next thing, halfway between green at 120 and blue at 240 is the cyan color, which happens to be at 180, but again, uh, we're going to add some, make sure there's a little bit of black in the mix so that it looks like a mix of paint. Halfway between the blue and the violet, we're going to get to color approximately 255, 240, 250, two, not 240, 255, yeah, 250, 255. That'll give us an, oops, I don't want any black in the mix because that really makes that too, look too dark. So that color looks rich as it is. And then between violet at 270 and red at zero or 360, we're going to go up to a color somewhere in between, you know, magenta and magenta red. But again, you know, it could be two, three, 320, uh, you know, it's up to you. But again, adding a little bit of black so it tones it down. And there we have three distinct color wheels. All right, you guys, uh, the next thing that has to be done is the centers need to be blended. Uh, when we mix uh, subtractive paint together, uh, you'll understand that after reading the um, instructions and the course descriptions about uh, uh, subtractive color mixing of cyan, uh, magenta, and yellow paint. 
uh, or I'm sorry, inks would mix to produce a black or a dark gray. So you can use a dark gray or a black, that's fine by me. And that would be showing what happens when mixing the primary colors together. When mixing the primary, uh, primary light, red, green, and blue, Mixing those wavelengths together, we get pure white light, so we leave that white. And then mixing red, yellow, and blue paint together, same thing happens. We get a nice kind of dark gray. Sometimes it looks a little bit muddy brown, depending on the paint that you use, but there you have it. All right, let me know if you have any questions about mixing color wheels.